All right, guys, hello and welcome back to the channel. I do want to preface this video by saying the reason that I'm doing a video like this, A, it's just fun to see the chemical reaction between CA glue and sawdust, but B, it's a very practical technique if utilized properly to fill mistakes in the field, whether it's a nail or screw hole or a small knot or a check. I'm a big proponent of having the tools and resources to work in the field without having to say waiting four hours for epoxy to set because it rarely does. Uh, when you need it to, it seems to just take forever. It's like watching boiled water. And the whole premise of this channel, again, is to show you guys as many tips and tricks as I can share in practical field use strategy with carpentry and fabrication, metalworking included, that allows you to reinvest into your own company or your own business. Uh, and how does sawdust and CA glue relate? Well, I think it's a phenomenal in the field repair method for small knots, potentially checks or cracks, uh, as well as screw or nail holes, which allows you not to have to wait on the cure time of epoxy. So without wasting any more time, let's get into the fun stuff. Here is what happens when you mix CA glue and sawdust. All right, so first what we're working with is a board of red oak that has a very clear and evident knot in it. I recommend taping off the area around it because CA glue is incredibly hard to get out once it's in. We are using Bob Smith Industries CA glue. Uh, CA glue stands for cyanoacrylate. Um, not sure if that's exactly how you pronounce it, but that is the glue we're using. It is incredibly fast setting, please be advised. Now all I do is cover the surface with the glue and then I push on a little bit of sawdust. I repeat the process and cover it back up. Now this is a little bit excessive here, but I just wanted to show you guys a dramatic version of what happens when you mix these two things together. All right, and so you can see that it's actually starting to smoke. And this is what happens when these cyanacrylates start to mix with fibrous materials um, like sawdust. And so basically um, it starts to polymerize instantaneously and it is an exothermic reaction, a lot like certain types of epoxies or bondos. It is heating up and in this instance it's heating up incredibly quickly. Now you got to be careful with this kind of stuff because if you were on a job site and weren't paying attention, uh, this is how shop fires start. And right here, you can actually see the glue boiling with the wood. It's become so hot. Uh, we got a little swamp fire going on down here. Now, please, please, please wear a mask when you do this and be in a well-ventilated area because this stuff will mess you up. Towns Van Zant style. All right, to note, before you vacuum this up, please, 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 please make sure the chemical reaction is fully finished. Do not vacuum up hot embers into your dust bag. That's a recipe for an explosion. Little dust buddy here, he could go, go, yeah! Secondary sanding, and I find one little area left that I have to fill, and again, this stuff will literally make your eyes water if you're not careful, and please, please, please do not hover right over this. Um, here's a good look at the chemical reaction boiling yet again, pretty strange. You can see how quickly something bad could start in your shop if you're not paying attention. It could superheat, and if you're around other dust piles, that's no good. Right here, all I'm doing is a scratch and density test for you guys to show you. Uh, I was pushing down very, very hard with my knife. You can see a little pocket that still is yet to be filled, and that punky spot, which I actually didn't even focus on. But all in all, that's the finished product. Uh, it's rock hard, it's very stable and it's a very cost-effective way to fill knots and holes. So all in all, what do we learn from this? It's an exothermic reaction that happens incredibly quickly between CA glue and fibrous material, in particular sawdust. I've also read online that certain rags are very prone to ignition or smoking as well because the fibers act the same in the chemical reaction as the superglue and sawdust. So. Would I recommend using this as a wood filler method? Absolutely, I think it's phenomenal. Would I say use caution? Absolutely, I think it's incredibly possible to have a dangerous situation in a shop, especially with a bunch of sawdust laying around. 
Uh, I did actually take my dust bag out of my dust extractor and laid it out on the concrete after this video in the off event that something were to ignite. Did not want to be responsible for having a big fire. So, you guys, if you like what you're seeing and you want to see more of it, please, 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 please hammer down that like button. It helps us get more views uh, than we currently have. And we're just a startup channel, but we'd like to keep providing you with content. As always, we hope you're doing what you love or getting one step closer to it. Can't wait to be releasing more content for you guys with tips and tricks, fun projects and builds, and of course, a little bit of our adventures as we use our metal detectors. See you guys later and have a wonderful morning, day, or evening.